Hey everyone, Mike here. Um, I'm going to go over the um, the uh, tube fly that I've put together, and it's uh, it's actually pretty awesome. I've used them already. Uh, here's a short video on um, on on uh, a smallmouth that I caught using this particular fly, only a little bit larger. This one here is a little bit. This one here is uh, just around three inches and just over a quarter inch in diameter, whereas the um, the, uh, the the fly that I used to catch the one in the in the following video here was uh, about a half of an inch in diameter and close to four inches long. So here's the video on the fish that I caught. Um, enjoy it. We'll get back here and uh, do the uh, the tie. Actually, the assembly. All fl all ties are actually assemblies. Putting things onto a hook, but on, in this case we're going to do it to a tube. So check out the video and we'll be right back. Again, this thing right here is dynamite, and this is why this is a pretty decent smallmouth. Okay, there you go. That was a pretty nice fish, and that's not the only one that I've caught on this particular fly. Um, and it it, it 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 may be the largest. I don't know. I did catch another one about a week after uh, that one, and uh, it it was it was a pretty nice. Uh, it was a pretty nice fish as well, uh, and I've caught a lot of other ones, you know, in the 15-inch um, range, which is uh, which is still a nice fish, you know, 14, 15 inches. That that's a nice fish. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started on everything that I used to put this one here, this one particular fly together, um, and it's simply uh, some water balloons these kits that you can get online um i bought mine off of amazon i'll have some links on you know where you can buy all of this stuff or at least most of it um and uh you can probably get these things and start tying them now one of the things about the um the, the balloon straws that uh you'd be using if you go that route I, now i'm not trying to undermine the um the, the sales of a, um, a supplier for this type of material. I can tell you right now that the suppliers uh, of these materials have a much, much, much higher quality of a material than what you're going to use um, with the, uh, the, the balloon tubes. Um, the only thing that you might be able to save is on the, uh, the tubing. But the, the problem with the tubing is, is getting the exact uh, material ordered correctly now I, I ordered this tube or this yeah this tubing on uh, Amazon the only thing and I didn't return it because I've got a shop downstairs I'm always tinkering with stuff I'll just go ahead and hang on to this um, but this is a it, it is a flexible um, tubing only it's not it's not flexible enough because the end here of the um, of the tube uh, does not accept even a B10S, uh, the Gamagatsu B10S hook as easily. See, I mean, I'm pushing pretty hard to get that in there, and that's not what you want, because actually you want to go in easy and come out easy, because one of the uh, purposes of the fly is to not get tore up so much with the fish, so that when the fish hits, it pulls the hook out, the, the fly kind of slides forward a little bit out of the way of getting tore up by the fish, which is allows, it allows you to to um to save your flies uh the other thing is um uh if you get snagged or something i mean this b10s is a really good strong hook and i'm fishing for smallmouth so my leader uh, my tippet material is is a 15 pound test sometimes up to 20 depending on on where i'm fishing 
uh, if there's a lot of snags and rocks, and I know that the, the uh, fly, if I'm using a, a streamer or something, the fly's gonna get down there and hook up on a log, log or something, um, I, I can actually straighten this hook out by pulling it really hard and it puts no pressure on the fly at all because the fly is actually independent of the hook. The only thing that it does is that tubing slides over top of the eye and, um, and that way if you do ruin your hook, you just have some extra hooks with you, you take it off, you, you uh, tie a new hook on, slip it in, you're back in business with the exact same fly. It saves on hooks. That's the, that's the biggest, biggest thing to me. I mean, there may be other uh, reasons, but the biggest thing to me is saving on your hooks. Um, you, you can use them over and you can use the fly over and over again and, and in fact you can change the size of your hook this is a, a like I said a Gamagatsu B10 S size 6 and if you go to a size 1 you can put it on the exact same fly and have more of a gap to where as it and, and, the, and this hook rides way back in the tail so if you're getting short strikes um, with the smaller hook if you change up to a bigger hook that short strike may become a set, a hook set, just because there's more, um, you know, more gap to uh, to capture your fish with. Uh, but anyway, uh, back to the uh, the tubing. Again, this is um, this is too rigid, it, but it's not rigid enough to use for the body of your fly. Uh, and the other reason is you can't get the uh, excuse me, you can't get the um, the, the more flexible uh, tubing over top of this and this doesn't melt down like this other material here and I'll talk about that in a minute but uh, I went back well actually I didn't go online to buy this but I'm gonna see if I can find it online because this is the kind of tubing that you want right here this is super flexible and the uh, the B10S hook it just it just slides right up inside there just like that it goes in that easy and comes out as just as easy because it stretches the uh, this this hose this hose when you put the hook in it stretches out and, and collapses back down on the eye of the hook and kind of holds it in place until you get your uh, until you get your strike anyway this is the kind of hose that you want this is a soft PVC um, gosh I, I don't even want to try and say here in this video maybe I'll put it in the um, in the uh, description of the video on the YouTube channel, but this is the uh, this is this is the kind of uh, tubing that you want right here. Um, so now let's go to the uh, to the uh, tubing that we're going to use for the body to tie the fly on, and this is um, it. This has little balloons uh, wrapped on the ends of these. It's got I don't know how many it was. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 100, 100 balloons total on three, three or four, on four different, um, I think it's four, four different uh, sets just like this. And um, if you got kids, what you can do is, I mean, it's like $7 uh, and you get hundreds of them. So you actually get a lifetime supply of this stuff. I mean, there's three, four different collars in there and... Um, that's that's another thing too. You got a, a, you know a wider range of colors, but again, I don't want to undermine the uh, manufacturers or the guys that supply this material uh, for actual fly tires. This is just a an alternative way to be able to uh, put these tube flies together. Anyway, the, what you would do is once you get the balloons off, it's pretty easy to take an X-Acto knife. This stuff cuts down pretty easy, and you just you just slice all of those uh, tubes right off of the um, the nozzle that goes on to the end of your hose so you can fill your balloons up that's the body of the fly now starting back at the tail and that's where we start the tie-in uh, I use this from Bonnie cord this is just uh, you know Bonnie cord that's been you know combed out to um, to this it, it's exactly EP fibers um, you know I'm sorry you know to say you know to the manufacturers that you know there's a better way um well i shouldn't say that, it, that i'm sorry to say that because quite honestly it is it does take work to be able to uh do this sort of thing 
Um, and, and depending on how many flies that you are planning on tying, you might be better off just to buy a clump or two of EP fiber and, uh, and, and work with it, with it that way. The only reason why I do it is just to give me something to do, I'm retired. Um, anyway, that's what we're going to use for the tail of the, um, of the fly. And then what I use is this um, body wrap, and it comes in uh, rolls like this right here. And then what I'll do is, as you can see in this video, I have a piece uh, laid out, and I'll use my um, rotary knife just to cut off the exact, uh, well, close to it exact, uh, length of fiber off of that roll. And then you're going to end up with, um, and I don't, I don't have it here. I think I threw it in my white box. So one of the things I do is with all my materials, I separate them out in colors. Not so much the type of material, but the colors. Um, but what I do is, since you can see, this is much shorter than the actual full length of the material. I'll keep the longer piece, just in case there's a bigger fly I want to tie. And um, it... I don't waste as much. If it, it comes to the point where I'm wanting to cut more of this down, I'll go ahead and lay it back down and hit it with my uh, rotary knife to, um, uh, you know, to, to have some more body wrap for the smaller flies. Then we get to the uh, to the uh, to the foam plugs. Um, you, you can use whatever you want. I I use double barrel poppers. I think double barrel barrel poppers are awesome. Uh, they're they're kind of hard to beat. There's a uh, frog that I do uh, that has no tying skills whatsoever, uh, but it uses uh, Pat Cohen's uh, frog legs, as you can see right here. These things are awesome. Now, can you make these yourself? Uh, yeah, you, you certainly can. But uh, the thing is, these things are already made, and they are so accurate, and you get such a great profile. As you can see, when you match up the right size legs to the correct double barrel popper, I mean, that is an awesome popper. In fact, I caught quite a few largemouth bass on this particular popper. And let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick, quick at a couple of the bass that I caught at a place called Lake Catherine in Jackson, Ohio. Check it out. Well, there you go. That was pretty cool. Um, I do have a lot of fun fishing, and that's what it is for me, is fun. I'm not doing this uh, to make money. Um, I'm just doing it to, to have fun. I, I want something to do. And again, uh, the materials, I might select, you know, materials that are already manufactured, and, um, and, and that stuff is usually better. I mean, I, I, I don't care, arguably it is most likely better than the uh, materials that you can get um, with the exception of a few things uh, better than you can get or make yourself it's it's always if, if you're only doing a few flies you're really better off to just go ahead and get the uh, manufacturer stuff um, but anyway on the plugging of our plugs to be able to get the uh, tube through this um, I've got this little scale right here that goes to a, a square it's it's like a little shop square it's six inches long and it's got this groove cut out in it and you take a bodkin and lay it on there and it perfectly follows that that line so that when you put the the um, your plug your your uh, EP your EVA uh, foam plug down um, it's just a matter of running a hot um, bodkin needle right through that and what it will do is it will allow the uh, bodkin to follow the, the contour of that absolutely perfect where you're 
where you take the, the hook in on this track down here where you go in is going to come out exactly in the same spot on the back side of your plug. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, fire up my torch here. And you don't have to bring this to red. Uh, just kind of bring it up a little bit to warm, a little better than warm, because the only thing you're wanting to do is be able to get this through this uh, foam without collapsing it too much. But that's all there is to it. You saw what I did, I just warmed it up and then ran the bodkin through and that's what I, that's what I end up with right there. It's right there on the bottom and right there on the bottom. It's a, the exact same spot. So that's, that in itself is pretty awesome. So now what we're gonna do is go to the, I'm gonna use white well, you know what? Let me uh, let me go to some red here because I'm gonna <clears throat> be be, be uh, using a sharpie to uh, make the head or the face or the mouth of my fly uh, red. So <clears throat> one of the other things that you have to do uh, on on uh, the tube flies that you're using these balloon straws with is You'll, you'll need to get, um, let's see if I got it here. Nope, that's aluminum tubing. Yeah, 16th. Um, I got this 16th inch brass rod here. Um, and what I did was I cut the brass rod down uh, to be able to make it just past through and then I bent the end with a couple pair of pliers so that I got a really nice bend in the end right there. But before I put the bend on and before I actually cut the, um, the piece, I would put the, um, I, I, would, I would put this blank into a drill and then I used a, um, this, this little file and the drill would be spinning and I would actually hit it, uh, you would want it to go in reverse so that when you hit it with this file, it would shave this um, material, the diameter of this outside diameter of this material down so that it fits better inside, inside the tube. Otherwise, what you're gonna end up doing is if you use the uh, 16th inch material raw as it comes out of the package, uh, it will go in, but it's, it's a lot tighter. And you don't want it super tight in the beginning <clears throat> Because if it is, when you wrap your material down on this thinner, cheap uh, tubing, um, it's going to be hard to pull your fly off of your, of your um, mandrel or whatever you want to call this thing that the tubing goes on. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to cut it down to length. And these things, now this tubing is three and a half inches. So we're going to make it uh, one and three Quarter. Is that going to be about right? Let's see. Uh, you know what? No. Let's make this one a little bit longer. Let's go a full two inches on this. Cutting it down to two inches. Now, uh, a lot of people don't waste their tubing material for uh, super small poppers, but I, you know, I'm planning on quite honestly uh, trying to get myself. It's going to take a lot to do because I got so many hooks. But I, I, I'm thinking about just taking my uh, fly box inventory completely to um, to, to tube flies. Uh, but anyway, one of the things with this tubing, like I said earlier, uh, it's cheaper, it's thinner, it's not as good as the stuff that you can buy. And one of the things that you need to be that you do is you got to be a little careful because you flame the end to kind of flare out the um, the end of your your tube. And actually, before I do that, because I'm going to be gluing, super gluing this blank, the one the one we we put the hole in, I'm going to super glue this blank to this tube. And to get a better to get a better uh, grip with the super glue on the tube is I'm, I'm just going to take it and kind of scratch it up a little bit and then that will allow the super glue to grab the um, to grab that material and the foam really well and before I, before I do that I'm getting ahead of myself there before I do that I want to go ahead 
and flame the end to kind of put a little bit of a, uh, a flare on there. And it's not going to take a whole lot. And, and you kind of rotate it as you do it. And the only thing that's going to do is kind of give it a little bit of a positive stop to the, um, to the, to the end of the tube as it uh, goes, through, uh, goes through the foam. And this is going to be a very tight fit. So what you're going to do is put it in there and you're going to have to spin a little bit. And actually the tight fit is good. And you're going to be twisting back and forth like I'm doing here to get it to go through. That's a very tight fit. Now, you may not even really need to, um, to super glue this, but I'm going to go ahead and, and super glue it anyway. Uh, just to keep it from spinning on me. But the thing is, you got to remember, the spin is good because um, or, or not good. It, it, it doesn't affect it because you can always, if the, if the foam spins, you can always spin your fly around to where you want it. So it's not going to take a whole lot. Just go ahead and kind of throw a little bit of a right there. Let's see if I can there we go. I don't know if you can see this in the video or not, but it just doesn't take that much. Um, and I like using these um, extension tubes. It takes it way down to where you can uh, have pinpoint accuracy on your... And as you put it down through there, you kind of spin, twist, twist and spin, and bring it right there. It's locked in place already. And you can see right there how it's just set back right to where we flared the end of that straw or the uh, yeah the straw up the tubing and then you can form it just a little bit however you need to and then it's ready to put your mandrel in just like that you put it in and then depending on what uh, vice you have I've got a regular uh, vice for um, two, two flies so this is a, a tube vise, but they've got this uh, piece that you can buy that allows you to uh, place that allows you to place your uh, this adapter, this tube adapter, in a standard standard vise. And then uh, you just have to adjust it to get it to where it needs to go, and then then lock it lock it into place, and then you you essentially have the same thing kinda. Um, you put it in there, and you just turn this little knurled knob down here. Now you've got yourself a a uh, tube vise with just a standard with a standard vise. It doesn't have to be a rotary. It does help for it to be a rotary vise, uh, but it doesn't have to be because if you have a standard vise, then all you're going to have to do is um, you don't you don't want to loosen it up to, to for the for the adapter, but you'll loosen up the, uh, the the knurled knob that holds the tube in place and you can actually rotate it. So now a $19 vise becomes a rotary vise when you're doing tubes. So you see, loosen it, and then you can rotate your, uh, your fly wherever you need it. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a pretty cool little device if you don't want to spend a lot of money to get started on your tube, uh, tying your tubes. Um, you know, I'm sorry if this is going to end up being a long video, but uh, I really think it warrants going over a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stuff. So what I'm going to want to do, and I'll probably cut it down um, later is I'm going to bring my vise or the uh, the tube in to where I've got about a half of an inch from the back side of the uh, <clears throat> from the back side of the the uh, foam blank, and then I'll go ahead and get my my uh, my thread started, and I'll put a pretty good little tag at the back side there because I don't want it to to unravel. And then to even put more security on it, I'll probably touch it with a little bit of the super glue and run that super glue across the top here. Just a little bit. And that's why I like these micro nozzles because it's got a very good control on where all this goes. 
and then just ra run my thread to the front and then run it back to the back again. And then <clears throat> that's already grabbed that super glue. And I took standard uh, paper towels and I cut them down into these little blanks so I don't waste all my, my paper towels. And it doesn't take much, but I'm just wanting to get the, uh, the excess super glue off of the back of that thing right there. So now what we're going to want to do is put our tail in. <clears throat> and I actually make my tails kind of puffy. A lot of guys are going to say, you know, less is more. I don't think so with uh, smallmouth bass. But if that's what you think and you want to go with less, that's, that's you know, that's, that's up to you. I, I, this is just the way I do it. It's not a wrong way and it's not a right way. It's just the way I do it. So what I want to do is try and find a length here that I want to tie this in. Part will go on the top. Uh, I'm going to cut this down to about an inch and a quarter. And then I'll go to the uh, top uh, side of the fly but all over to the edge a little bit. And then bring it in, put like two or three wraps on it and then bring the back side back around again to go to the other side of the fly and then I'll pull it. What it's doing is it, it's pulling it out to spread it out across the top there and then cinch it down just like that. And that all that tail is doing is pretty much hiding your hook. And then you want to do the same thing on the bottom side of your fly. You go ahead and grab some more of this uh, material. Again, I, like I said, I like mine to be a little bit on the heavy side. Get not too you don't want it too heavy, uh, but but you want it you want it heavy enough to kind of hide your hide your hook. So we'll get down to about a quarter inch there. It doesn't have to be exact because what you can do is um, when you get ready to lay this material down is you can line it up right to where the um, existing uh, EP fibers is and then you pull this back over and then you do the same thing you did on the on the top side is you kind of pull it pull it to spread it out even all the way around the uh, the tube there and then go ahead and run it back just like that and as you wrap you go about one thread width back and that really kind of smooths it out nice and even all the way around the fly just like that with the tube. Um, now what we're going to want to do is put that bait fish um, or actually the um, uh, the body wrap that we cut down on the fly and um, you'll want to go ahead and well, it, it kind of spins on you but if you pull on it just like this it'll kind of help straighten it out to be able to lay it down the way you want to better and uh, get it started just like that and then bring it up to the front right there and then I'll go ahead and again hit my threads my thread wraps on the tube with just a little bit of super glue it doesn't take a whole lot it just helps grab it and then start start wrapping and then one of the things I'd like to do is uh, to try and make sure that it lays back you don't want to, you want to try and not get your fingers on that uh, super glue. And this thing is going to want to, you can see it's wanting to lean forward because it's actually on that, um, that hump. It's got all that material tied in. So you're going to want to turn it to get it where you, where you want it to uh, follow the tube with the fires, fibers pointing towards the back. And it can be a little bit of a job. There we go. There we go. This takes a minute to get it started and then it'll follow it back pretty nicely.
when I get up to the front here, I might give it a little extra wrap to get that, uh, that fiber really nice and tight up against the body there. And then um, go to the top and I'll kind of separate the, uh, the fibers away from the, what, the material that's holding the fiber in place. And then put a couple of wraps in there and a couple of wraps behind it and a couple of wraps in front of it. And then go in and, and hit the uh, cut, cut it off. And uh, that's really about all there is to building the fly. And then just to, to, get it, uh, to get it decorated out, we'll go ahead and do that too here in a few minutes. But um, one of the things I like to do on these uh, flies and many of the flies that I tie is put a little, um, or at least this style of fly, is put a little bit of super glue right on the thread and it doesn't take much. You, it, you'll look and you'll think, well, there's no super glue in there. But yes, there is. So go ahead and, and do some real careful wraps with the uh, super glue that's on the thread. Pull it tight like so and give it a few seconds. And then that, look at that. It's almost like not even needing to tie uh, your uh, your whip finish or you know half hitch or, or, or whatever kind of a knot that you put in to hold your thread in place the super glue will hold it but then if you want to keep it from fraying out you go ahead and put a couple wraps of a whip finish on there and um, and you got yourself a tube fly now you can see I'm gonna go ahead and make a mess on my table here let's move all this stuff over to my other vise so that um, it'll be easier for me to clean up. <clears throat> but anyway, take the material that you don't want to cut with your scissors, take the scissors, lay them down uh, pretty much even with your foam, and then just cut back. That's really about all there is to this. I mean, it's it's a really easy fly to to to, to put together. And once you take it off the vise, you can go ahead and uh, kind of fine tune the backside here. Try and be careful not to cut your tail. There you go. You got yourself um, a nice tube blank that we're going to paint up here in just a few seconds. And what I'm going to want to do is go ahead and put my uh, hook holder, the back side, on. And what's really nice about the diameter of this uh, balloon uh, straw is this 1 16th inside diameter, super flexible. Um, tubing goes right over top of it. You don't have to flare this out to, to, to hook it in. It does a fine job without the flaring. So I'm going to make it so it's got about a uh, maybe a little more than a quarter inch, right around a quarter an inch on there. And then actually you want your tube back inside. And the reason you want the tube back inside is again this uh, as rigid as this straw is it's very fragile and when you go to put this tube on if you don't have the the uh, rigid uh, piece of brass in there to hold this in place you could bend your tube and and then you really pretty much ruined it so you run this straw or your uh, the tube inside and then go ahead and uh, this is a very tight fit and just put it right on there and push it all the way up inside just like that and then run your your EP fibers back to the back again Kind of twist it around a little bit. 
and then find the um, you again you, you can see the brass tube in there we don't need the brass tube in there anymore and what you want to do is just cut the uh, the trailing soft tubing that is just good enough to uh, hold the hook in and again you can see where this hook will go in and it stops right at the harder plastic uh, tubing and it just goes in there and just stops and that way you've got yourself a nice fly with a nice trailing hook on there and again this stuff once it gets wet it, it'll it'll stay back and if you've got a little bit of um, a taper that's not completely uh, even then all you need to do is just come in and kind of hit hit it um, enough at a taper when you cut it cut cut it at a, at a taper in the back here and it'll have a really nice uh, profile for this whole this whole fly I mean that that right there that right there is pretty nice so what we're going to do now is um, take it over to the uh, painting table and um, I'll do a video real quick on uh, painting this thing out it's really easy to do Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish up dressing your uh, the body out here, and um, that's just a simple matter of <clears throat> just playing around with um, a dark. I'm using black, a dark marker. You want to find out where your uh, the bottom of the tube is because this is the belly of the fish that's why I left it kind of white in the top just just like you would see on a on a minnow typically and what I'll do is I'll find where the uh, bottom is and I'll hold it so I can have these uh, eyes where I'm going to place the eyes just like that um, this is uh, an older pin. Let me go get a uh, newer one. Okay, that, that older one, that older pin on the nib of the um, my Copic pin, uh, it, it, the nib side, and then you got the, the wide side for the airbrush, and then this side here to do your detail work with. Uh, it has been, the older one has been used many times, and it's very hard to get a super fine uh, marking on it. Now there, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Um, you do want to try and be uh, symmetrical with everything and what I'll do is I'll take my pen and just put some of these lines on there just like that. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, And then just kind of arbitrarily throw some more in there to give you that pattern that you might see on a little baby baby bass. And then throw some lines in like that. 
and come to the other side and do the same thing. Um, and then get your lines in there. And then again. Just like that. And on the bottom side, if you want to, go ahead and just hit real lightly to give it that those real little small uh, points on there. Just like that. Okay. And then uh, once you have that, this is just a regular old Sharpie here, red Sharpie. And the reason why I use that red tube down the end of this thing is so that it blends in with the... Uh, the coloring that I'm going to do on the end just like that that way I've got a nice face you know wide mouth that's got that red color in it that the, that the fish seem to like and then what I'm going to do is I make my own um, Okay, I make my own eyes, although I do, I do buy them, or had bought them too, but once I get down to it, this is, I mean, not everybody's going to go out and spend $300 for a vinyl cutting machine, uh, but if you got the extra money and you want to do it, fine, but you may not use it quite enough to make it worthwhile, you might be better off just to go buy the prepackaged eyes. But the thing that I like about this is I can actually cut, my pu cut the pupils out. At, at different diameters so that I mean this is a small diameter uh, iris part of the eye here I think it's the iris um, that I put the pupil in just like that but if I went with a larger holographic circle here I can use the small pupils or I can go to a big pupil and have different types of uh, shapes of the pupil to do whatever I want on these um, on these eyes that I put on there. Now, I, again, remember, I've got this tube to the bottom side of the, of the fly because I want, when I put the, the hook in, I want the hook bend to go down towards the bottom of, of the um, tube. And so with these dots that I put right there, that's the placement for my eyes. And I go ahead and put those on. Just like that and actually these things do a really good job this is uh, vinyl I bought at a vinyl shop that they make signs with that they put on automobiles and everything else banners and um, you press them into place those things really without any super glue or anything stick pretty pretty well from these things that I've made here sometimes these um, these these that uh, I bought have been hanging on the rack for a long time and sometimes the glue behind them uh, it, it's, it doesn't hold uh, it, it ages and, and uh, doesn't hold as well but uh, fi the final application that I do here on, the, uh, on this fly is I'll put my uh, the long piece back in so that I can just have, be able to hold it and hold the fly so that now what I want to do is I got I have these little tubs that I buy they're usually for you know you can get them for their restaurants for little um, salad dressings or something like that and then I'll take some UV finish and put a little dab inside there just like that and not, not a whole lot and uh, And then I have uh, one of these, uh, they call it an acid brush, and I'll fill that brush up with that uh, UV finish that I just put inside. This is so that you don't have this stuff running all over the place on you. And just go ahead and, and dab it just like that on the face. What this is gonna do is it's going to lock in that uh, Sharpie and EPS, or I mean, so I'm sorry, the uh, Copic uh, marker. It's going to lock it in so that the um, so that the sun and the water 
doesn't does not fade it out. I just I, I do this to all my uh, all my poppers is I'll I'll coat it with um, some UV using a brush like this one here, and then that way when um, when I use it, it's not going to bleach out on me as as easily. But anyway, that's it. I mean, this is a very easy uh, fly. I know this took a long time to do this video. Uh, not going to apologize for it. I really think it was needed. Uh, you, you can take this, what I've shown you, and take it to whatever level you want. Uh, if uh, if you just want a few flies here and there, I would really suggest buying the uh, tube material uh, that's designed for it. Um, but if you like to play around uh, like I do, then you can you know go take the route that I did and buy the. Uh, water balloon uh, kit and just pull the the uh, balloons off or fill the balloons let the kids play and play with them and then use use the uh, the balloon but anyway this is uh that's it I mean, that's uh that's a pretty nice looking looking fly right there and that thing will definitely um definitely catch some really nice small mouth and i mean it'll catch other fish too i happen to be a small mouth guy bluegill uh, I'm going to shoot for some carp this year and possibly later this fall I might go after some musky. I don't know. Um, I've caught a musky before, but man, it's been years and years ago and it wasn't on a fly rod. I've, I've, used, uh, I've used bait casting and uh, spin casting stuff as well. In fact, I still have it. I just happen to use um, a fly rod more today. But anyway, that's the fly. Hopefully you got something out of this video. My name is Mike Murley. Um, if you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button and consider coming back as I as I can get these done and I put more stuff up. I'll do it, uh, but I thought I was going to have a lot of time in my retirement to do more of this, but I'm finding that I got more stuff to do around my house than I, I have no idea how it got done while I was working. Again, this is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.